What's going on YouTube? In today's video, I'm gonna be bringing you guys along on a tour of my living room space. I'm gonna be showing you guys everything contained within the space and what I like to call it, you know, a minimal and a modern setup. We did a makeover at the start of the year, you know, to kind of transform the space initially, but a lot of things, you know, I've changed throughout the year. I've added things, taken things out, and now, you know, we're at a place where I'm ready to show it to you guys again. I hope you guys are ready for this. I'm excited for this. I'm amped up for this. Let's go ahead and do this. So first off, the living room space measures about 156 square foot or 12 by 13 feet. It's also got an 18 foot ceiling and 293 inch wide windows on one side of the wall. The design layout of the living room was a major selling point of the house for me. We had a smart motorized roller shade installed in the lower window. The style is linen white and there's also a black fascia installed at the top. It's compatible with major voice assistants like Amazon, Google and Siri, which also means app control and home automations. One of my automations on HomeKit triggers the shade to lift up when the sun rises and down when the sun sets on a daily basis. One thing I can say for sure about automated shades is that they'll save you a lot of time in the long run. The second window is so high up on the wall and honestly, I'm still unsure about whether I want shades up there or not. Below the lower window, you'll spot my TV setup. The TV I've got there is a 75 inch Sony X85J Bravia TV. I found that it's a great size to maximize the space between the window and the bottom console. We've also got it mounted onto the wall using a full motion TV wall mount with a weight capacity of 132 pounds. I hate that the top end of the TV leans forward when mounted to a full motion arm. Also, I never moved the TV, so I'm probably gonna end up switching to a fixed wall mount just to get rid of that forward tilt. The TV works great for movies, gaming, and pretty much anything. It uses an LED panel, which looks great, but I think an OLED panel might look even better in here, especially since there's no windows to cause reflections. I also think an OLED would mount cleaner to the wall since they're thinner and less bulky than traditional LED TVs. The X85J also has some great features like HDMI 2.1 inputs, 4K upscaling, HDR, and a whole lot more. Behind the TV, I I've got an LED backlight from Govi. It comes with a little camera you have to either install at the top or at the bottom of the TV. The camera then goes on to read colors being projected from the screen to create matching backlights, which then creates a more immersive viewing experience. Personally, I found it to be inaccurate sometimes, but I like the effect it creates overall. During my last upgrade, I installed a Casa Smart Outlet behind the TV to provide power for the TV and a light strip. I did this to create a modern and minimal look where it looks like the TV is floating. Honestly, I don't use the smart features of the outlet very much since the TV and the strip both have smart features for app and voice control. Below the TV, we've mounted two BESA units side by side directly onto the wall. Again, the goal of this is to maintain a modern and a minimal look. We picked them up at Ikea, making sure they would be a good fit under the 93 inch windows above. They come with everything you'll need to either mount to the wall or just place on the floor. You'll also need to pick up the doors separately as those do not come with the best of units. Behind door number two, you'll spot the power outlet I drew power from for the one behind the TV. I've also got a power strip in there for all the electronics on the console. What I did was cut out a piece of the bottom to run cables from the top around and into the console to keep cables out of sight. Personally, I prefer a clean cable free setup, especially in a living room TV setup. The last thing in there is an Xbox wireless controller sitting in a Razer charging dock. The dock works great for keeping the controller fully charged at all times, and I've put them in there to reduce clutter at the top. For more ambient lighting, I added an 80 inch NanoLeaf Smart LED strip to the bottom of the console. Without it, there's just a black hole under there, which to me is very depressing. I've also got an automation setup where the lights dim when no one is in the space and get brighter once motion is detected again. On the top of the console, there's just a few things. To the far left, you'll spot my Xbox Series X and a Sonos One smart speaker. The Series X is a limited edition Halo series and I've got it there for use with my Game Pass subscription, which I also use on my PC. It's actually really been great for game sharing and transferring my saves across multiple devices. Also, using this with the Sony TV has been wonderful since the Series X requires an HDMI 2.1 connection to maximize all of its features. The Sonos speakers isn't a cheap purchase, but quality doesn't feel cheap either. I put it there to play music in the living room and sometimes use voice control. It can be used with Amazon and Google Voice Assistants, but not Siri, which is quite unfortunate. It's not massive and takes up very little space, but the sound that comes from it surprises me every time. I've also paired it with another one that I've got in the kitchen for stereo sound. This just means one acts as the left side and the other one acts as the right for a two speaker setup. Next to those, I've got a small floor vase, which I plan to spray paint matte black pretty soon here. I just think the shine and color currently doesn't fit, you know, with anything in the space at all. I've also got an all black see-through flower vase and fake plants in it on the right side of the console. To the right of the TV setup, there's a small reading corner. 
we installed a slat accent wall over there to create you know a sort of separation between the living room and the dining room it also pairs great alongside other slat walls we've installed across the house the process of adding the slats wasn't too difficult but it was a little expensive due to the cost of wood at the time that we added it in the same corner there's a lamp that resembles disney's pixar if you know what i mean it's got a shiny gold and black finish to add a luxurious look to that corner i've also got a smart bulb screwed into it which of course i've you know set up automations for in front of the lamp there's a little chair and a side table the chair is a 28 inch mondo from urban barn in sorrento vanilla it's got two thin metal armrests which aren't comfortable but the chair works you know just for now the entire seat is really just a giant pillow sitting on a frame i've added a couple more pillows on there because you can never have too many of those the side table which has now been discontinued looks similar to the frame of the chair and has an opening for placing items we've just got some books in there which i'll be honest i've never read and don't plan on reading anytime soon if anything they're just ornamental on the flip side there's the rest of my living room the couch is a dresden from roof concepts and i'll be honest without a headrest it has not been the most comfortable to sit at for extended periods of time it's a modular sectional couch which means some of its parts can be moved around i've got mine in stockholm modern felt with a walnut veneer the veneer can be placed at the center of the couch or at the far end but since i lay on the couch a lot Having it at the center would never have worked out for me. There's also a single drawer on the veneer, which can be opened by softly pushing on it. The couch has low profile feet and that fits the modern and the minimal look we were hoping to achieve with the space. There's also a bunch of pillows and a brown throw on there to make the couch more comfortable and enjoyable to use. We opted for pillow colors like forest green and brown to match the earth theme we were going for for the entire room. There's a coffee table in the front of the couch called Evo. Out of every coffee table that I've ever used, this one has got to be the most fun to use and also the easiest to clean. The top side can be pulled up and out to raise the height of the table. I use this feature a lot whenever I'm in the room working or just watching TV. It's got a shiny white finish and also came with two stainless steel feet, which we went ahead and spray painted to matte black to align with all the room style. There's a single drawer on the right for storing small items like my extra Xbox controller or even a TV remote. When the top side is raised, you'll also notice more storage underneath there as well. Underneath the table, I added an 8x10 feet area rock from Laloy. I did this to add some texture and life to the bare floor. It's also way nicer on the feet than the wood ever was. If you're wondering, the floor type is a luxury vinyl plank, which looks very much like a dark gray. The wall behind the couch was painted Gibraltar gray before we moved, which creates a nice contrast with the adjoining wall. There's also three similar style picture frames mounted above the couch to add some personality to the otherwise boring wall. We made sure to mount them high enough to create enough clearance for anyone sitting below. We also picked up the pictures and walnut frames to pair well with all the other walnuts in the room. On the adjacent wall, there's some nano leaf lines. These are light bars that reflect light against the surface they've been stuck onto. The starter kit comes with nine modular bars for creating unique designs. They can also be expanded to create even more complex and insane designs. To create the one we have there, 18 bars were used. We also applied some matte black skins on them to help make them stand out from the wall a bit better. This also makes them a better fit for the room overall. There are so many lighting effects to choose from for different use cases, and I actually have them installed in here since there's literally no main source of light in the room. The lines can get really bright at their max, which now provides all the lighting that I need in there. They can be controlled manually or through any of the major smart ecosystems. I personally use mine with HomeKit and Siri for automations, app, and voice control. The lines use 3M tape, so if you want a less sticky alternative, you can check out this walnut lamp, clock, and key charger combo. It's also got three light temperatures to choose from and a vertical phone stand. This wouldn't only be a solid addition to any living room space, but honestly, to any other space you can think of. The open concept of the clock and lamp combo is also pretty cool to show off the friends and family. On the left side of the couch, there's a small gala side table from Roof Concepts. The idea with this was to get something similar to the dining table located close by, and this fit that bill perfectly. We also picked this up in black to follow the overall room styling. Other than looking good, it's also great for placing small items like your phone or even drink cups. Next to it, there's a 6.5 foot tall fake plant from Artiplanto, which is supposed to add some greenery to the space. I might actually end up switching that out for a shorter one since this blocks my smart thermostat and airflow control located behind. The smart thermostat is from Echo B and controls temperature throughout the house. I also use it as a motion sensor to set up automations with other smart devices within the room. Now, that's everything that pretty much makes up the space, but I'm sure it's not going to stay like this for long, but right now, I'm in love with the modern and the minimal aesthetic we've achieved here. Questions about anything I talked about can be left in the comment section below. Links to everything mentioned can also be found in the description below. I hope you guys enjoyed the tour. I'll catch you guys next time. It's Tomi, and I'm out, y'all.